<laughs> hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX. Last time we put an end to this story, and this time there remain only one, two, three dungeons that we have yet to clear. This video is going to be the entirety of the Wish Cave and all related topics to it. I don't know how long this is going to take, but we're in for the long haul. First off, before anything else, there's something that I need to lay on the table. Joyous Tower. Joyous Tower is going to be the one challenging dungeon that I will not be running as a part of the series. I will be doing an overview of it when the time comes, but I won't actually be playing through it. My argument for this is that the rules of both dungeons are remarkably similar. Purity Forest is just Joyous Tower, but harder. And all you get for clearing Joyous Tower is a treasure room with some not so great stuff in it. Not that exciting. I think Joyous Tower fits the requirement for what I would consider a treasure dungeon. That being said though, Wish Cave. Before we get into any actual dungeon playing, let's go over some Pokemon that would be of interest to you. The exact rules of Wish Cave, as we have seen, are level re levels are reset to level five. You may bring in up to three Pokemon. You get to bring in your own items and money, and all moves get reset. No move experience, none of that. Default PP, default power, default accuracy, and they must be built up over again through the dungeon run. Knowing what we know, let's first talk about Charizard. We can recruit high-level Charmeleons in multiple post-game dungeons. You can evolve it into Charizard right away. Charizard has some good level one moves. It has spe specifically Heat Wave. Pokemon are generally great if they have strong level one moves and most fully evolved starter Pokemon are this way. The flying type also adds to its versatility in being able to walk over any tile, not get burned from any lava tiles, though I don't think there are any lava tiles in this dungeon. I'll just bring it up just for the sake of bringing it up on that note. More importantly, being a flying type protects it against powerful ground type party wide moves such as magnitude or earthquake that are gonna be showing up in this dungeon. By being a flying type, that eliminates one of the very real ways that you could just lose instantly. But it has a few downsides that make me kinda not like it as much as the other choices. It's still great, I will not deny that much. If a Pokemon has a lot of level one moves, if it has more than four, the game will assign you random level one moves. You're gonna have to be using escape orbs to reset the dungeon again and again until you get what you want. The other reason that Charizard is great, and also why it's not so great at the same time, is its Mega Evolution. Mega Charizard Y is excellent. It keeps its flying type, gets drought for its ability, strengthens that heat wave and any other fire type moves in the party. You could bring along other fire types and have them be benefiting from this. Gets rid of the water weakness that fire Pokemon have. Mega Charizard X is not so much. It's a fire dragon type, loses out on the flying type that it would have by default. And this is a per dungeon coin flip. You're gonna have to reset the dungeon to not only get the moves you want, but also the mega evolution you want. If it falls into your lap and you're okay with using escape orbs for this purpose, then go ahead. I wanna warn you that there is a quit option in the options menu for a dungeon. If you use that, you're losing all your items and money that you've brought with you and you don't wanna do that. Ghost types in general could be pretty good options. With the x-ray spec, small stomach, and two perfect apples, they're effectively able to avoid trouble and walk to the exit every single time. It can be tough keeping the belly full, but you can also see the items and random berries with small stomach will constitute as a full belly. There's also the fact that you could just walk to the stairs and until you're able to find food again, switch to somebody else so they're not getting the penalties from having an empty belly. This part is something that I'm amending in post just so it's more useful to you. I initially thought that Cloyster was very good because it had access to Icicle Spear and Spike Cannon. Not to mention good water type moves, it could bring in a blizzard TM. It's not quite as good as I thought. It turns out that Icicle Spear is an exclusive move to Shelter. I just thought it was on Cloyster. You might still like it, but it's not what I thought it was. I don't believe I have either of these, but Masquerade and Scizor are some good bug type Pokemon. Masquerade has Intimidate and starts with Ominous Wind, good screen nuke. Scizor has an excellent defensive typing of Bug Steel and it gets Bullet Punch at a low level. Those can both be good Pokemon. Next up is Ditto. Ditto learns only one move, Transform. Which means that as long as you're using Max Aethers on that one move, it's able to transform into any target Pokemon, that's any enemy or any Pokemon in the party, 
and it gets full PP on all the moves that it copied. As long as it stays transformed, you can just keep doing this again and again and again, staying transformed into different Pokemon. You might make mistakes and transform into the wrong thing every once in a while, and you do need to use this move once per floor, but the fact that it can just copy the capabilities of whatever you have, have something with a screen nuke, and it can use that screen nuke almost endlessly as well. It's a repository for PP, and it effectively eliminates one of the ways that you can die, and that's running out of PP and having to use struggle. Ditto is good for another reason. If you have a Mega Evolution, it's able to transform into it, assuming it as its default form. If it gets hit by a status, whatever, it can just transform back into the Mega Evolution again on the next floor without a need for an Empowerment Seed. So in some ways, it's an imitation better than the real thing. For the same reason as Ditto, Mew is another good choice if you have it. Chances are you don't, but if you do, Mew is able to use Transform as a level 1 move, so that's one thing. It's basically just Ditto, but better in that regard, because it's able to learn every single TM, and because you can bring in whatever TMs you want, just bring in whatever sounds good with the team that you have. Some of the lesser options that I could see some people using would be Ground Types for Earthquake, but I don't like that because... Earthquake requires the right team comp, it can hurt your Pokemon as well. I just think you can find the same thing better elsewhere. The last Pokemon that I want to talk about is somebody that I need to recruit, and thankfully it's not a random chance. We're going to Fiery Field. On our climb up, let's talk strategy a little bit. Maybe you don't have three Pokemon that sound like they're worth bringing along on this challenge. That's okay. If that third Pokemon is just a liability, bringing two is fine. If it's just gonna be dying a lot, not really contributing much, taking up space, taking up Reviver Seeds, then who cares? Don't bring along a third Pokemon in that case. You can win this with two. It's a lot better than just losing out on so much as a result of that, of, of, of feeling like you have to bring along something. I would highly recommend against going alone, but going with two Pokemon can still be beneficial. Also, if you're coming here high level Charmanders, there's one of the wild Pokemon that can be obtained if you wanna get Charizard for this. This is the fiery field. It is no place for your kind. I am Entei. I live surrounded by the fiery lava of volcanoes. Depart from here immediately. I can't share my space with anyone else beats the crap out of you. Oh, right. You were here for a reason. That's how all these things go. So guys, you want to hear my best Chuck of Conroy impression? Has maxed out stats. Wow, guys, these boss fights are really easy. <laughs> Let's go. All right. Flamethrower, double slap, go! I did, ooh, I did a sex double slap. I used the big boy word, Ente. You impressed by me yet? That was it. <laughs> Team Rose Thorn's courage in the fierce battle left an impression on Ente. You can now access the sacred field camp and... Entei is level 50 and always has the rare quality riled up. If I added an H to the beginning of this, I could make it very naughty, but I won't. ENT specialist? Entei is my choice because at level one, it has access to the move Sacred Fire. This is a room nuke similar to Heat Wave, but is physical based. It doesn't have quite as much PP, but it does have a little bit more power, and that's why I wanted to go for it. S attack and special attack are boosted up when you take damage from an enemy. Ideally, I want to avoid taking damage in this run. So now comes the time where we start rolling for rare qualities on our three Pokemon. Now I'm gonna make my selections and we're gonna re-roll for some rare qualities. Bringing Entei first, and I've decided Cloyster is my second choice, as I think it could be good for some burst damage at range. Steamroll! That was one of the ones I had in mind. I'll take that. I'd like to have isolated a uh, rapid bullseye to you and not have it on somebody else in case they die and you live. But that's such a good ability, I don't care. Um, our damage isn't going to be that good because we're being le level reset, so if our screen nuking moves can just do normal damage every time, that's good. And my third choice is Ditto, who has no rare quality. Let's do something about it. Pee Pee Pouch. That's a good rare quality, not one of the ones I had in mind. 
I was intending on doing something else for PP besides that, though, but I guess it does kind of match Ditto's whole theme of how it makes not running out of PP no longer a problem. I decided that since I got something in theory useful for Ditto, I'm going to move on to Entei right now just to make sure that Entei gets something if it comes to that. Show me what you got, Entei. What do you got sleeping deep inside of you? Tight formation. I did say I don't want to be getting hit, so this is more useful than that. There are some screen nuking moves that we're going to have to be on the lookout for, but if possible, I would like to just have something better than that. Defensive rhythm. Get that out of here. We don't want that. A lot of rainbow gummies. At least now we get an attempt at this every time. We have 18 tries to get a good rare quality. Recoil boost. Not going to be using recoil moves. Lonely Courage should not be underestimated. This can be a good quality for those that want to go it solo, but I'm not doing that. XP boost. With us being low level, that could be good, but really all that does is it's a tool to not grind as much. I could just offset that by offset that by having a better rare quality that'll give me an in-battle benefit and just beat a few more enemies. No. Friendly. This can be good early in a dungeon. I just don't know if I'd want this on our leader. If somebody wanted to, if somebody recruited up and had this, I'd very much welcome it, but I don't know if I want this on one of our only three slots that we have direct control over. Sales pitch! Riled up for the fourth time?! <laughs> Man, maybe just me getting Rapid Bullseye as my first rare quality gave me a false sense of how easy it is to get the ones you actually want. <laughs> Leap ahead. I want small stomach or leave half. There, I'm saying it out loud. I want one of those two on one of my lead Pokemon. Squeeze out. We already have PP Pouch on our team. Don't need that. That's a poor man's PP pouch. XP boost. Ugh. Come on, man. Just give me anything. Anything that would have a use. Blast control. I'm not worried about explosions, and no, I don't really think I need that. Last one. Brawl. More enemies in a room, the more powerful you'll mo your moves will be. Given that you're going to be using screen nukes, I like that. I'll take that over tight formation. I have to say, I don't like the fact that we don't have a way of making Belly irrelevant. My plan was to do something to make Belly not a big deal so that... That would just be one less way I could die and thus free up more item spaces. I've given this a lot of thought. I looked at other Pokemon that I had with food managing abilities because I love, 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 love having Willow with me to just make food irrelevant. Yeah, I'm talking about you. And I looked at everything. I came to the conclusion that Beedrill might be a decent Pokemon to bring along because that has a uh, Twin Needle at a starting level and it learns Fury Attack soon after. And it's guaranteed to get that. There's no uh, more than four moves there. But I just don't know. I really like what we have going with Cloyster, Entei, and Ditto. And our rare qualities, while they aren't what I wanted, they're all good. So I think I'm going to try it anyway. Let's get to packing for our travels. Let's talk about some underrated items really quick that I'll be bringing along that might not seem all that worth it. Efficient bandana. Sometimes moves won't cost PP to use. This can help manage PP consumption and can be good because of that. This sucks normally, but it's good in long dungeons. Escape orb. Obviously I'm bringing along one of these. Cleanse orb. You never know what might be rendered unusable by a trap. So of course I want that. Revive all orbs are coming with us because these are going to be some last ditch efforts that might enable us to survive when we wouldn't otherwise. Health orbs. You never know when you're going to get stuck from the stairs and poisoned. One shot orb and foe hold orb. You want answers to monster houses that aren't screen nukes. Eventually, you're just not going to be able to one shot things like you used to. Moving on to super good items. I'm bringing the x-ray specs. That's going on whoever our leader is. You can't change my mind on that one. It's just too good of an item. 
you can see where all the enemies are, plan your movement around them, avoid tough fights. Likely you'll be able to tell where a monster house is and just avoid it altogether. Also tells you if there's items you haven't picked up. Goggle specs. I want this so that I can douse for traps if I'm ever gonna have to walk through a long room. This might save my life sometime and I can just switch to the Pokemon that it's on. Technically not needed, but we will be here until Thanksgiving if we use the trap finder after every step. We can pack any TM move we like, so I'm gonna pack Sunny Day for Entei. And you should know that this is the last dungeon of any kind that allows you to bring your own items. Don't be conservative. Take as much as you can. Got a lot of max elixirs, I'll take those as well. I got five faux hold orbs. These are tickets out of trouble. I'll grab one all dodge orb in case I just really need to get out of a fight to reach those stairs. Weather lock orb can be good, but because I'm teaching Entei sunny day when I start this dungeon, I don't personally need it, but I wanted to bring it up for you. Helper orb. I have a very specific purpose for this in mind. Bring one of these, it might save you. I'm gonna bring one Totter Orb as an expendable item if the threat we're dealing with isn't really that strong, but it's just kind of overwhelming us somehow. And now for the best items. I've been hoarding these so that I can use them on this. I have five Guiding Wands, which is admittedly not a lot. I used two or three of these in the Silver Trench when I really shouldn't have. And Pure Seeds. These instantly warp you to the stairs. Bring as many of these along as you can because these are effectively a free pass to not have to play the last floors of the dungeon. I'm bringing a cleanse orb along in case these things get ruined by a trap. What you're gonna wanna do is subtract the number of floors remaining in the dungeon from how many stair finding items you've been able to pick up along the way, grab any of these that you find, and then just use them all up. By getting just 10 of these, it's an 89 floor dungeon and not a 99 floor dungeon and those last floors are the hardest. I have one item space left over, and in that last spot, I'm gonna bring my one and final decoy seed. You never know when this might save you. Apple traps are mean. A lot of traps are mean. If just something goes wrong, anything goes wrong at all. If a Pokemon's got pluck, we'll want that. And lastly, throwing items are good. I'm bringing some of these along, hoping to pick up more along the way. I also want to preface this by saying, I don't know how this is going to go today. This could go well, I could do this in one try, but that's also not realistic. I just wanted to save the game really quick right there just so I was sure that a manual save happened after I changed my inventory and before I went into the dungeon. I know that the game auto saves like crazy, but you know, it's, I'm old, okay? I'm just so used to the days where you wanted to make absolutely sure that you save before anything important. Don't feel bad if you fail at this. Beating it in one try is not realistic. You probably will fail a time or two, learn some things, and then go on. I'm also gonna recommend set aside time for this. Be in the same headspace the entire way through. Don't do this in chunks because then it's kinda hard to remember what it was you were in the middle of doing. Squad number five forms today. I'm probably gonna be playing as Ditto the most so you get the X-Ray specs just so I passively will just know where everything is and I'm not having to switch around. Entei can take the goggle specs. I value not having to check for traps constantly as something very good. And because Cloyster is gonna be a ranged attacker and using its moves a lot, I think the efficient bandana is best used on you. Our screen nuking moves are gonna be used a lot, but I get the feeling that Cloyster is just gonna be sniping stuff from across hallways all the time, even stuff that we don't see coming. I'm also bringing along about 14,000 gold because there's going to be Kecleon shops in here. In fact, you know what? There's no use for money after this point. Let's bring along a little bit more just in case there's some expensive stuff in Kecleon shops that I want. I wouldn't be hurting at all if I had to say goodbye to 20,000 gold if I fail this, it's fine. Okay, it's now or never. And believe me, I'm very tempted to take that never option. I got really insecure and wanted to make sure I have my escape orb. I do, okay. So if I don't get the moves that I want on Entei or the others, I can always just reset. Here we go. Entei got, uh, didn't get Sacred Fire. Gonna reset. I cleared the wish cave, guys! 
I get seven more tries at this. Don't fail me luck. I need to just have something lucky happen to me after everything else. Sacred Fire Interruption. Okay, I'll take it. Eruption is nearby Pokemon. I kind of would have preferred to have Lava Plume, but I'm not going to get picky. Okay, I've already made a mistake. Uh, I've learned that Cloyster gets Spike Cannon. It doesn't learn Icicle Spear. That's actually Shelder that learns that. But I think I'm going to roll with it anyway. Uh, I want that Steamroll, and I still think Spike Cannon's good. It's just not as good as it could be. I've just put a lot of thought into the setup, and I don't know if I have another setup in me unless I have to. Sunny Day TM, we'll learn that right away. Being able to just overwrite weather has a lot of value, so get rid of Leer. Ditto, use Transform. There we go, a double Entendra. And I can also see everything on the floor. This looks pretty nice. For these first 30 or so floors, you're gonna want to clear these rooms out. Stay on them for a while, kill every enemy, really clean them up. Make sure you're getting every item that you can. A trap bust orb, what does that do? I assume it busts traps, but you know. Destroys all traps on a floor. Sure, we'll just use that right away. Whenever you get certain items that just have effects that could possibly benefit you, but aren't really something that you think you want to bring along, just save it for time, just do what I did right there. Just use it while it's on the floor. Uh, we got a Doom Seed, uh, but it doesn't work. I guess it could come with us for right now. You're gonna be on these first 30 or so floors getting those early level ups that actually matter for probably somewhere about two hours. It's gonna be long. Entei was so big I didn't think that enemy was actually in front of me and I was like, why can't I move forward? I'll take level six. And I'm gonna be here a long time. I don't think that I need to show you everything about this dungeon. I'm just going to show you how to beat it, what the good tips are, that kind of stuff. Does Eruption hit you? No, it does not. It's just a fan shape in front of me. Or I guess maybe like a circle around me, kind of like Brutal Swing is. We got a TM starting off a Weatherlock Orb. That could be good later on. A Brutal Swing TM. Can anyone learn that? No, they can't. That's what this dungeon is. It's mainly answering questions, where you go around the rooms, you get every item, you see what's worthwhile. Hydro Pump, yikes. HP Swap Wand. This swaps the HP of you and the Pokemon that you're waving it at. This can be a situationally good item. Now, the other reason why I suggested doing what I'm doing here uh, with the X-Ray Specs, the most important thing that it does for you is shows you the location of Kecleon shops and monster houses. I can see in the top right, that's probably a monster house, but because it's early in the dungeon, I think it can actually make sense to do it right now. Uh, when it comes to apples, I would say use them before you're in a bad spot. We'll use this perfect apple early on to raise our maximum belly size. If I could recruit something with small stomach, that'd be great. I don't know if we will, but you never know when a trap's gonna make you more hungry or what's gonna happen. For now, I think I'll just use Sunny Day, set up before going in, and then we'll do this. A lot of TMs, a lot of good stuff, looking good. Generally, you want to avoid monster houses you go into later floors, but for building experience early on, this might be good. Good, just like I thought. Level ups all around. And a third one. Can't wait for you to get your spike cannon. Kind of sucks that you're not going to be helpful early on. I had it mistaken that you got Icicle Spear. I really didn't think that was a pre-evolved move for you just because I've seen Cloyster use it so many times over the years. It happens. You serious? Give me... Uh, I'm in the doorway, will this work? Yeah, it does, okay. That's fine. Thank goodness it doesn't count if the AI does it. Uh, no, oh, I'm playing as Cloyster. Um, spin around. Giga Impact, no. Sunny, d pfft, the irony. Psych up TM, nope. I'm also gonna say, don't care at all about treasure chests. It's just not worth it. Reviver Seed could be kinda good if I could throw something away for that. Oh, sh I don't think I even mentioned it. Stay away wands. These are just throw, uh, wave these at anything across the room that is a perceived threat. It's just a stackable no button to battling something. Why would you not? 
And also because this could be potentially not very clear, uh, you are free to uh, get rescued in this dungeon. It was not the case in Red and Blue Rescue Team, it is in this version. By having the same Pokemon in the team twice, I'm leveling up Sacred Fire twice as fast as I would normally, and I'm not nearly as worried about PP consumption. By doing that, our screen nuking move is just gonna get really strong. I could transform into Cloyster if I just want two long-ranged moves, but in this case, I'm mostly gonna be transforming into Entei to get double duty out of that. Looking like another monster house. Indeed it is. At least we're getting them out of the way on the early floor so that we can get these radar orb. Reveals all the locations of all Pokemon on the floor. That's completely useless to me. That's not though. Brilliant is right. Are you kidding me? 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 All right. Using a reviver seed on the first floor. Oh. Don't you dare die a second time. I don't have sacred fire. I gotta step forward. I'm dead. Are you kidding? <sighs> okay, 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 okay. Eruption, go! One damage? How did that, oh right, because it's influenced by health. Why is Entei dead? Why didn't I get a revive? Seriously, why did I not get the option to? What? What happened to my reviver seeds? Did I? I know I packed. Did I? Escape orb. <laughs> I had to retreat on the third floor. This does not bode well. So in all of my efforts to prepare for anything, I skipped over something. I didn't bring any reviver seeds and this happened. Yeah. So I'm going to rectify that and bring as many big reviver seeds as I can. In case I get something with leave half, I'd prefer this. This can also restore PP and belly if I die. These can really be lifesavers. And I'm sure we'll be picking up lots more along the way. I'm just gonna bring six to start out. Since Cloyster wasn't all it was cracked up to be, uh, I decided that I'm gonna change the team a little bit while we're out here. Slot number three is gonna go to Groudon. It learns Earth Power at low levels, gets Lava Plume at a low level. Um, it gets Earthquake as well, but that's not really why I'm bringing it. It's just something that you can do if you really want. That was almost a disaster fee. I forgot to bring, I was gonna forget the escape orb and then it hit me that I just used my escape orb. This is my full inventory that I'm bringing in here today. I'm gonna try to use my throwing items on this run. If I need to hit stuff from across the room, I'm just gonna go for that. If it needs chip damage, there we go. All right. Now, hopefully for real this time, let's go. Starting off, I want to upgrade that drought into desolate land so that the weather cannot be overwritten and it's benefiting all three members of our team in a meaningful way. The reason why I'm going so heavy on the fire is because if you're a Pokemon veteran, you've probably figured out who the boss of this place is. And if you haven't, I'll just say they're weak to fire and ground. That too, but I care less about that. Impressio, go primal at level five -ol. With that, I'll be seeing you on some later floors when cool stuff happens. I think it'll kinda waste your time if you see all of this run, because really you just gotta understand the rules of this. I'll show you highlights along the way. If I showed you the whole thing, we'd be here for over four hours, and I don't think either of us want that, so. Uh, let's switch to Ditto right away. And Ditto, I'm gonna have you transform into Entei. Oh, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on, I need to check this. I need to see what our moves are because you might not have what I want. No, whoa, that's a good move set. I got Lava Plume and Sacred Fire, heck yeah. Oh, that's good. That's an even better move set than I got on my last run. 
Eruption uh, kind of sucks though, but the fact that this is just damaging nearby enemies, it could burn them and I got sacred fire. Yes, okay. Ditto, transform into Entei, copy its moveset. You get full PP on all these moves on every floor and by doing this, by just upkeeping the one move with transform, we're gonna be fine. We're gonna have lots and lots of PP for our strong moves and we can also level up our you know, powerhouse move twice as fast by just using sacred fire on twice as many Pokemon. You might want to even have it on, a, it might not even be that bad of idea to carry two dittos into this dungeon so that you can level up your move three times as fast. Heck, because we get full PP on every floor, that's even faster than twice as fast. Well, leveling up moves is important. Everything's level one, so they're gonna be missing all the time unless we do. My strategy here is switching between leaders so that I can either have the X-ray specs or the goggle specs on based on what the situation needs. See things ahead of time. Know where the enemies are. Don't get caught in dangerous situations. Stop them before they start. I've realized the efficient bandana doesn't really make sense on Groudon anymore. I think I'm gonna swap the goggle specs around. Give that to Impressia, who doesn't really need a held item, and then the efficient bandana could go on Entei here to save PP on these moves that we actually care about. Kecleon shops are nice refreshes. This is another reason why the x-ray specs are so good. If you see this on a floor, grab it. <laughs> Rainy orb. You might as well take the refresh. Take absolutely every benefit you can. Here, I'm eating a berry even though I don't have small stomach just because why would I not? Uh, HP swap wand. Pretty good item sometimes. I think I'm gonna say no to that one though. I ain't stealing from you in a place like this. You can trust this face. And I'm willing to bet Monster House no, treasure room, okay. Uh, oh, that's Primal Ground, and I saw that off the screen, and I was like, what is that? No, okay. Uh, I can't get these items anyway, so I don't care. Troll Orb pulls all items on a floor to you. Sure, all in one place, I like it. Vitamins still appear. It's a thing you can use, I guess. I don't copy stats perfectly as a ditto, so I do have lower stats than the others. Might want to use those on pudding. Small stomach! Come with me! You have a new home now, Ratty! Oh my gosh! I got small stomach! Yes! Oh, that is the best! I got that as my first random rare quality! Oh man! Alright! Alright, let's go! Let's do this, man! If this happens to you, be aware that Pokemon that join will not level up until after the end of the dungeon. So we gotta protect a weak Pokemon for 99 floors if we wanna keep this. Um, I'm gonna ditch Eruption for Ember, just so we have a ranged attack on you as well, in addition to uh, what we already have. Pure Seed. Anytime you ever find one of these, find room for it in the inventory. This is a free not having to play a later floor. What rare quality does Primal Groudon have? I just realized that I didn't actually check that before changing this. I remember you have something good. Thrown item boost. Okay, so that could potentially come in handy, but, well, I don't have any more items to give me rare quality, so without grinding, I wouldn't have been able to get something else. I shouldn't really feel that bad about it. Geodude is the first dangerous enemy that I recommend being on the lookout for. It can rock polish triple its speed, can have sturdy for its ability so it takes two hits to take out, and it knows a rollout. Now there's a dangerous combination. Oh, and Geodude can set up defense curl on any part of the floor to raise the power of rollout. Joy seeds equal level ups. Might as well take them. Level up suck, but not in the early levels they don't. Is it some kind of rule that every Max Aether has to have an X on it? I have not found one good one yet. I just got Steamroll as another rare quality and we're 21 floors in. Heck yeah, you can come with because I don't have that anymore thanks to dropping Cloyster. Trio, oh, I gotta re-primal revert if I wanna keep this. Oh no. Uh, switch with Entei. There we go, that's how it's done. Okay, good thing I brought two of these things. I was thinking it might have been too much, but no, it's good I did. Doug Trio is scary. 
I'm just gonna come out and say that it almost killed Entei just now, or uh, Ditto. Same thing. Using my first stay away wand. Bye, Duck Trio. I didn't think of this, but it's actually very good that we have one gigantic Pokemon on the team because they have a larger area of effect when using a wand, meaning that we have a lot more circumstances we can use them in. So here's that pickup ability we talked about all that time ago back on our first day. Uh, Meowth placed it on the ground. That's pretty convenient and thoughtful of him to do it that way. Pudding, uh, you got something to transform into and it's right in front of you. Yep, that butt. It was right. Uh, I spawned next to it, and uh, I didn't know it would have magnitude. Okay, okay, okay. It's not that bad. Impressio lived. We're down two reviver seeds, though. Oh god, I'd have to. I want my small stomach. I'm keeping my small stomach. Uh, I don't remember what you had. I remember it was good, but nah, let's just ditch you. Oh, great, great, excellent, perfect, gorgeous. Uh, how about no? Get out of here. Ugh. All right, got to be more careful when I spawn next to things. I can't afford to spend a turn transforming if it's just not worth it otherwise. It's better to have Ditto transform into something wrong than to just get everyone killed. And now I know that they can. All Dodge Orb. You can use these to have a lifesaver whenever uh, you find one. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Are you actually kidding me? Beat it. Right around here, floor 27. I've noticed the difficulty getting higher and staying higher, and I don't like that. I think starting now, we're gonna be playing a bit more cautiously. I thought it was gonna be around floor 30. Came a little sooner than I thought it was going to. I am also seeing more value in Charizard now, thanks to being a flying type, so that Magnitude and other ground type screen nukes just won't be a problem. Uh, I don't dislike the team that I went with though, but oh God, I probably shouldn't have. Okay, good, I'm fine. Uh, I just am so nervous to be in the same room as anything else now. Oh, Keki, you better have something good for me. A joy seed. Okay, I can afford that. Wow, they actually make it so that you have to pay the money ahead of time before using it so it doesn't tempt you into stealing. That's kind of funny. Not to jinx it, but as a floor 29, I have yet to see any more Doug Trio, and I stayed on this floor a good long time, really cleaned it out. With any luck, maybe. I'm not gonna say it's safe, but maybe. And that's it. No more Primal Groudon. Uh, got poisoned. Gonna need to get another Empowerment Seed if I wanna get it back. That hurts. I'm only a third of the way through, too. Changes the room to a monster house, but has no effect on a floor that... <sighs> Why would you make that? I gotta say this, uh, a downside about Groudon that I've come to realize is that it took longer than I thought it would for it to get Earth Power. Earth Power is great when it does get it. It just, it took up until like the 35th floor to get it, and I just... I thought it would happen sooner, but Groudon levels up very slowly. You can actually see that right now where Ditto's almost twice its level. Leave half! Leave half! Yes! We've just doubled our Reviver Seed count. Something to be aware of on this floor. Pokemon were just appearing out of nowhere, and I wasn't really sure how it was. Yeah. After beating an Inkata, it respawns a moment later as a Shedinja. So anytime you knock out an Inkata, hang around for a little bit, wait it out, and then just hit the Shedinja with something that it's weak to. I could see that being frustrating if someone didn't catch on to it. Empowerment seed! Ah! <laughs> I only was without it for a few floors. That was fine. Okay, 
I've got into the groove of things at this point, and I think I want to kind of show my strategy in action for a floor, just so you see exactly what it is I'm doing. Uh, right after I finish leveling up, of course. That doesn't happen that often now, so it's kind of funny that I got two right there. So as soon as I go to a floor, I switch to Impressio, see if there's any traps immediately around us. I see that there's not. So I'll just check this item, see what it is. I play as Pudding by default so I can see where everything is on the floor, and then every time I walk into a room, even though this isn't a great example, I press plus to switch to Impressio right away, see if there is a trap in that room. As long as it's visible on the map, you can see if there is a trap. And then I hit plus twice more, go back to playing as Pudding. Do that for the entire floor, and then we hopefully don't die. Sounds like a pretty good deal to me. What do you say? Guiding wand! Yes, that's four more floors I don't have to play at the end of this thing! Gimme! Uh, whatever, my items are full. I don't care. It'll combine with my stuff soon enough. Uh, here, chuck the... Uh, yeah, swap with the totter orb. Who's getting hurt? Uh, crap. Uh, Golbat's attacking me on the exit there, and I can't get to Impressio. Um, go Impressio! Uh, what are you doing over there?! What is he doing? Okay, uh. Yeah, gimme. Okay. Switch to Impressia. Ancient power is all he can do. I need to get away. Uh, this is. No! Saw it coming. Saw it coming. Saw it coming. Should have used a wand there. Items still work fine. Uh, that's death. Why were you over there? Why? Why did you go that far? I'll take the tiny reviver seed. I like how as soon as I draw attention to what it is I'm doing, yep, instantly die. Ancient power, go. It doesn't do that much. And then they're doing a fight over there. And then, wow, everything just went to hell in a handbasket, didn't it? 30, okay. Thank you guys, okay. Back we go. Oh, there was an all protect orb in here. That would have been nice to have walked over before that happened. Uh, Groudon's over there now, what? Why are you going off on your own little La La Land adventures? If there's one thing I don't like about having Groudon in the party, it's that it sometimes gets confused on where to go because it just takes up so much room. And this is not the first time something like this has happened. It's the most severe that anything has come of it, but uh, that's really frustrating. That's really dumb. Anyway, the last thing that I wanted to say about my strategy is marking traps. By seeing where a trap is and then just using the trap finder in there, you've marked it for the rest of the floor and that red X will just tell you where it is. Halfway. Halfway. I've been here for three hours. In Red and Blue Rescue Team, this floor is fixed to always have a link cable and a wish stone on it. Take the wish stone all the way to the end. I just can think of a lot of times where an ally is off doing something stupid and I'm they're in my line of sight so I could aim this wand at them and switch places with them. Plus, unrelated, Groudon's a very big target. Crash! <laughs> I knew it was gonna happen! I knew it! I knew it! I sound so happy about it. <laughs> Save me. <laughs> Once again, the autosave is to the rescue. I kind of... You gotta wonder. Did they make this game autosave so much because it was unstable? And would they have not made this game so autosave happy if it were more stable? Fortress isn't particularly dangerous on its own, it's just the fact that it has sturdy. I'd watch out for that because it means it's going to likely survive your first attack unless you're using specific moves. Groudon, do you just... Do you just hate shopping? Every time I do any kind of shopping, you just run off and go beat someone up. Usually very poorly. Four guiding wands, yes, 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 yes! Are you kidding me? 
I just got Steamroll. I don't know if I have Steamroll in a Pokemon already, but I'll take that and check it. I didn't have it. I think that was what Meowth had, and I couldn't remember what it had all that time ago, and I was just like, you know what, I can't be using Reviver Season down to just, like, one left. I need to hang on to it. <laughs> so, I guess I got it back. Uh, another tip about my playstyle is that I swing my tail as Groudon because it has a lot longer range, given that it's nine tiles instead of just one. And it swings around with a trap finder in every direction from that, so I can usually uncover multiple traps with one swing. Plus, it just has the item on it, so makes it a lot easier. Electrode, you know rollout, and I'm willing to bet you probably know some form of self-destruct or explosion as well. I'm keeping away from you because I don't trust you. Numble has magnitude, that's good to know. It's not nearly as dangerous as the previous magnitude foes. It's not dug trio levels of bad that we're talking, but it's still same type attack bonus magnitude. Oh great, just what we need, two Groudons. Uh, it's what happens when you spawn next to things and you gotta attack on turn one, I guess. I could always disable transform though, but then I don't want it using struggle. I guess there's the tactics menu. Yeah, I should do that. Oh great, two Groudons, just what we need, and shopping. Heavy rotation specs, I don't believe we found so far. Uh, when equipped, they boost the critical hit rate when using the same move as turn of, as turn of, the, 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 you can read. Uh, I tend to use the same moves a lot because I know the truth that type advantages don't matter and same type attack bonus is where it's at. For that reason, could be a good item. I gotta praise PP Pouch for these long dungeons. Um, I have not had a single time where PP was ever a concern. I've had to recover PP a few times, but aside from just upkeeping my transform on pudding here, never been a problem. I've this is my first time ever hitting zero PP on any move at all except for transform. It's just between that and the nullify bandana, PP doesn't matter. And then if you add small stomach or leave half into the mix, that's removing two ways that you can die. By making ways that you can die irrelevant one by one, that's how you do it. 69. Ugh, I had to stretch my back. Groudon is trying to learn Lava Plume. That's really funny. That move has gotten leveled up a little bit from our journeys up here because it's one of Entei's starting moves. Golem, Golem. Oh, that's dangerous. That is so dangerous. Golem is really bad. If you ever see a Golem, use a stay away wand right on cue. I'm just waving that. I'm not gonna mess with you. Golem can have magnitude with same type attack bonus and I think they can even have earthquake down here. This thing is a run killer and it's a beginner's trap. Of course it's got dangerous rock type moves. I'm pretty sure Rollout's in there, but I ain't about to stick around to find out. In fact, this is the beginning where I'm just going to rush to the end of the floor every single time if I can. It's just not worth it. In fact, you also need to be looking around room starting about now. This might have been good to be doing sooner, but now more than ever before with Golem in the mix, look around the room whenever there's an enemy in it with you. Don't take any, any chances. It's so important that you don't have the entire team wiped to one attack. Another reason why I wouldn't recommend fighting Golem is it has sturdy for its ability. It can take multiple hits to take out. Just use the stay away wand. Don't risk it. 13 guiding wands. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six pure seeds. I can go up 19 stairs for free and we're on the 80th floor. Here we go, guiding wand. Wave that, stiff. Almost said something else. We just wave that, get it for free. Okay, uh, uh oh, what is that? What is that over there? Uh, well, whatever it was, it caused us to level up. That's okay. PP Pouch is great. Just keeps restoring my PP by five out of nowhere. It feels like it happens almost one time out of five, too. Someday I'll find out what this item is. Iron, okay. These shining spots can be Pokemon ambushes. Maybe you want to avoid them. Maybe you just want to take free vitamins. I want to take a little aside here just because there's not really a good place to say this. The Kecleon shops in Red and Blue Rescue Team are the only places to get Leaf Stones. Ouch, such a common item. The King's Rock and the upgrade in the whole game. This goes into how one version can just have Porygon and Porygon 2, but the other one can't breed it. It's so bad. This is the only place the Munch Belt appears in the original version. 
Bad, 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 bad. I didn't mean to do that. That's apparently a thing that can happen. I know that they say careful where you swing that thing when they give you the descriptions of stuff though, but that's really bad. I, I guess I'm, I feel it going badly now. Uh, drink that, go for it. I hope Entei is okay. Uh, okay, apparently Entei got back. This might be good. Sacred fire, let's just do it now. Get rid of him on top and then just walk to the stairs because they're right there. We'll swap to Groudon, make sure that there's no traps and then we can just beeline it. <sighs> for being so close to a disaster fee, that actually turned out pretty good for me. Dusclops, that's kind of awkward and not a Pokemon that I like to see and it's showing up on the later floors. This thing I believe can inflict curse and even if it can't, Pressure is a nasty ability to be up against. My whole make PP irrelevant strategy might not be so happy against it. Ha! I got five guiding wands on the 90th floor. If I didn't have strategy, I would welcome that very much, but if I didn't have strategy, I'd be dead by now. Eh, I can just get the sacred fire back. That was a good move, actually. Made things really easy. The stairs are in a monster house! I don't think that, uh, I haven't used a pure seed in years. I, yeah, it warps you close to the floor stairs. That could stick me by myself, smack dab in the middle of a monster house, forced to take an actual death. Not worth it. This is why I said, have items that are answers to monster houses that are not just using a screen nuking move. Full hold orbs, really, really good. God tier items. Do your worst. It's got some dust clops. Gonna go for the full hold orb. I'm just not gonna risk the fact that there's an enemy in front of me that's probably gonna be able to take a hit. Sacred fire! Man, that's really bad. Oh, I got a double attack, perfect. Down they all go! 1,500 experience points, and that's level 42! Well, look at that, my level's up. And so is ENT Specialist, the true hero of the world. And uh, no to Impressio. Impressio levels up, Impressio's level 21. Like, this is really funny to me, just how low level that is. Uh, that was a slumber orb, that could be good for some stuff. Uh, eye drop seed, nope, don't need that especially if it's broken. And then last up, a storage orb, allowing me to access my storage unit right now. Oh. Don't care about that. We're just gonna take the stairs and starting on floor 93, I have just enough of these pure seeds that I can uh, not have to worry about anything else. We can just go near the stairs. We use our x-ray specs to see if there's a monster house on the floor before we do. And then if there is, we wave one of our leftover wands to make sure that the stairs aren't there. If they're not, pure seed it is. Go on, Puddin. I probably should have somebody more capable on their own do this than have Pudding do it when it's still a ditto. Uh, Petrify Wand, yeah, let's go on. I'll probably switch over to playing as uh, Entei over here. Uh, oh, we got a monster house on this floor as well. Guiding Wand. Wouldn't you know it? Couldn't be anything else. Has to put the stairs there. Gosh, they are jerks to us here. There's two enemies already in this, uh, already in that room too. Oh, sorry, soon to be three enemies. I doubt that's the right anything to that song, but hey, here we go. Uh, let's step up a little bit. Get two sacred fire users in this room before we do anything else. Impressio finally gets that long-awaited level up. Sacred fire again. They only start moving after they take damage, which is good because most of the time they die in one hit to my stuff. All good. Impressio, you show that. Uh, oh, Flygon was still alive. Sorry, Flygon. You're about as unnoticed as you are in everything official. I know, deep cut, I'm so sorry. I love Flygon, I really do. But it just, it never matters to anything and it's so sad. Up we go. 
Floor 95. Knock on wood, I'm feeling okay about this. We got some revive all orbs if everything goes wrong and we lose all of our seeds. We just can't all die at the same time with no reviver seeds. That's really the only thing that could happen from here on out. Granted, it could. I had no idea how much my mic stand had actually drooped from being here. I have been here for six and a half hours now. Not, not all that's doing the dungeon. That's counting running through Fiery Field once again, all the preparation work that I did, my botched attempt where I failed on floor number three, all of it. What a pure little seed. <laughs> That <laughs> Scizor is short! How tall are you in the Pokedex? I know the Pokedex is a load of hoo-ha, and nothing has ever been even close to what it should be in the way of height and weight. You know, Charizard's, what, four and a half feet tall? Nothing taller than an Ash Ketchum could ever ride it. But still, that, that that's so pitiful looking. I always thought Scizor was cooler. <laughs> Turn into a Tauros. Uh, that could actually be kind of bad. Not not this, but uh, what was happening back there. Sacred Fire, please. Thank you. Earth Power. That wheezing could go boom. I realized that a little bit late. Okay. I need to be screen nuking before I leave a room for any purpose whatsoever. Floor 97. Scoping it out. Nothing here. Over there it goes. Floor 98. I've never done this before in my life. And it feels so good. I, I gotta be honest, I've been having fun doing this. And I thought this was gonna be a miserable slog and I was gonna hate it and it was just gonna be the worst thing ever. No, it's actually been a really, really fun time. Oh, okay, whatever. Sacred Fire, get one more level up on Puddin' right before the end. Level 43. Welcome to the 43s. Oh, man! <sighs> I'm still sleepy. Who is it? Who is that over there? I'm Jirachi. Who are you? Ah. <sighs> I'm still sleepy. They ain't making fun of us. We're really fighting a sleeping Jirachi. Starting off this fight, I want to be playing as Pudding. Uh, I'm not in range to copy you. Okay. What I'm going to do instead is open this turn with an item that I mentioned was good, but wasn't really clear as to why. The Helper Orb. It would majorly suck wiping in against this thing. So calling in another rescue team to boast our numbers by three so they can just tank some hits for us sounds pretty darn good. I went with fire very heavily as Jirachi is still psychic type. It has serene grace for its ability, making secondary effects more likely to go off. That's kind of good. Um, and yeah, it's it would really suck to come all this way and lose, so I don't want to risk it. Quick attack. Uh, wow, uh, we are ganging up on this thing. Uh, is it gonna be yet another fight where I don't get to do anything? I'm glad that they're taking its attention away, though. Sacred Fire, Earth Power misses. There's a quick attack. If this Rattata makes it all the way through, oh my god. I, I got this Rattata on like the second floor and I didn't think it was gonna make it. Speaking of not make it, Sacred Fire! <laughs> Unstable genetic makeup will be the end of you all! My vision blurred a little bit on that yell, but it's okay, because I'm used to it. I've spent years building up an immunity. Confusion on Sceptile, good. Sacred Fire again, 121 damage. Gotcha! It's done! <sighs> I'm still sleepy, even through my display of uh, uh, vocal cord manliness. You still sleep. Uh oh, I hear singing. A song of purity. It's all those pure seeds I used to get to you. Ha! Eyes wide open. I don't know why, but I'm wide awake. I'm Jirachi. When I awaken, I grant a wish. I have to. Uh, ahem. Uh, then I ask you this. What is your wish? Lots of pea money fills the floor with money. 
This is anywhere from 10,000 to 18,000. Not worth it. Lots of items. Fills the floor with random items found in Wish K. This can include the X-ray specs. It can include joy seeds. It can include all sorts of things that are very worthwhile. All right, I guess. A camp is a random camp that you have not yet obtained free of charge. I can't claim this reward. More strength fills the room with joy seeds and vitamins. There's not much actual use for this going forward. It's just there if you want to increase stats easily. Something good automatically raises the rescue team to the next level. If already at max rank, a new Pokemon never recruited before will join for free and come with its friend area if necessary. Because there is no Pokedex, the only way to have every Pokemon truly is to have a living Dex. If you have a full living Dex, in Red and Blue Rescue Team it gives the lots of money reward instead, but in DX it's glitched. The way that they handled Wurmple's branching evolution was just by having two copies of Wurmple in the game that spawn 50% of the time when, where Wurmple is supposed to be. And this means that unless you have a Wurmple that evolves into Silicoon and a Wurmple that evolves into Cascoon at the same time, which why would you, it'll just give you the opposite Wurmple that you don't already have. Yeah, your reward is a Wurmple. For me, money is irrelevant from here. I can't bring it with me to any more dungeon runs. This is it. Items are irrelevant too. I've done everything with them. I own every camp. More strength would be kind of nice. I'm a freak for those stat caps and just trying to hit them to see how powerful I can get. I think out of all these, I recommend something good the highest because the rescue team ranks are the hardest thing to get if you want to truly get 100%. Don't do this for a toolbox upgrade. The next toolbox upgrade is only after you have the rank of master. I think I'll go for the more strength. I think that sounds like the best thing for me. I want to be stronger. As you wish. Now, here goes. Ta! It's beautiful. I gathered up items from all over the dungeon that make you stronger. Right in the storage too. Whoa, that's cool. The items you received have been sent to storage. One more thing. You seem like a lot of fun, so I'm joining your team. Jirachi will only join the party in Red and Blue Rescue Team if the Wish Stone is obtained from Floor 50. That's pretty awful and is totally a beginner's troll trap. Has Serene Grace for its ability and will always come with the rare quality friendly. If there's any Pokemon at all that you still want that you haven't recruited by this point, Jirachi's just a nice Pokemon that can help you get it. And this is helpful for the next challenge that we have coming up. It was the first thing that came to mind. Because it's got three prongs on its head. Ah, using that power made me sleepy. Good night. I'll be at camp if anyone needs me. tri attack went on back to camp. Just sounded very Southern the way that they worded that. Puddin safely finished an adventure at Wish Cave. One try. Radita, you were more helpful to me than I could have possibly imagined. I just barely chose to go inside on small stomach just to see how I would do, thinking that this run would help me learn how to play this dungeon well and see how necessary small stomach really was. You might have a small stomach, but you have a big heart and you are the most Radita has ever mattered to me. Since you're my second Tauros, you're Turos. Foratress, having Steamroll for its, a bit, for its rare quality, was a very big boon that I wasn't expecting. Steamroller, you're a steel type after all. It's funnily a very common trend that after long dungeon runs and all that, and a lot of caching going on in the game, that when Jirachi grants your wish, it crashes the game. Uh, I've had three of you reach out to me now with clips of your own of this happening, and it seems to be a relatively common thing. I was going to save that until after the fact in case it happened to me, because it would have been a real wheeze if it wasn't expected. Well, this was a productive day. We've done just about everything there is to do in all of Rescue Team DX. Jirachi comes at Mount Moonview. I want to sleep here. Next time on Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX.
we'll see an overview of Joyous Tower and then move on to Purity Forest, the hardest thing in the game. See you guys then. Thank you.